So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic F1 in schools car using Fusion 360. Um, first thing you might want to do is just click on preferences and just make sure the camera controls are set up down here to Tinkercad um, because, to be honest, that's the, the most intuitive way of using that. Um, so once you set up that, right click will allow you to orbit the mouse wheel will zoom in and out, push down on the mouse wheel to pan. Okay, it's really important that you use those. So um, I'm gonna show you how to make a car. This is not necessarily the best way of making an F1 in schools car, um, but it's a very good basis to build upon. So, we're going to start off with drawing a sketch, and whenever we draw a sketch, we have to select which plane. Okay, we're in a 3D environment, so I get three different planes on which I want to draw it on. In this case, I'm going to draw it on the floor. Okay, so now my tools have changed. We're not going to worry about any constraints in this video. We're going to worry about create and modify. So they're pretty self-explanatory, most of these tools. If you go to create, there are more. We are going to, first of all, do a rectangle, two-point rectangle. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about regulations and sizes and things like that in this video, um, but we can focus on a few that are quite important. So as you see, when I'm, when I'm drawing a shape, you've got the measurements actually showing live as you're doing it. So which whenever, whichever one's highlighted blue, you can actually type in that box. So because the width of the foam block is 65, um, I'm gonna make that 65 and I'm gonna click tab. And then it takes me to the next one. Um, and the length needs to be somewhere between 170 and 210 millimeters. But we're not going to be actually creating um, the uh, wing at this point. So that might add on to this. OK, so I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to go to 180. Okay, And then click tab. It locks those in. Just hit enter at that point. OK, so we've got then a box here that's 65 by um, 180. That's just obviously just a flat shape at this point in time. Um, so what I'm going to do is start chiseling out of this. First of all, what I'm going to do is make some space for the wheels. Um, like I said, I'm not being particularly precise in this video, but obviously you need to make sure the size that you cut out here will accommodate the size of, of the wheel. So at this point, you should go look at the regulations and see what size the wheels are. Now, I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention as to what size I put in there, but really I wanted to make a note of that so I can make sure this one is exactly the same size as the one I just did. Now, the front one is going to be a little bit bigger because there's a regulation where behind the wheel, you've got to have a bit of space. I think it's 15 millimeters. So I'm going to automatically make that one longer. When you're doing this, you should be looking at all the regulations, making note of your, your dimensions and things. OK, so. We now need to cut away these bits because we want these to become holes. It will all make sense in a little while when you see it. So I'm using the trim tool here. If it's not there, just go to modify. And I'm just going to remove because there's two lines there. I do have to click twice. OK, so I've got the back of my car here. I've got space for the rear wheels. I've got space for the front wheels, plus a little bit of space behind them. And then um, this is the front of my car over here. So I'm now going to click Finish Sketch. This takes us back to the 3D environment. You can see the tools have changed. The tool we're going to use here is Extrude. So whenever we want to make something 3D, we press Extrude. 
Um, and you can either pull this, you can type in the measurement here, or on the right hand side, it gives you some more options. Don't ignore this box that pops up on the right hand side. Whatever you do um, in Fusion 360, you'll get this extra sort of options box pop up for whatever tool you're using. And it's really useful, really, really useful. Um, don't ignore it because some of the problems you're having might be because something in here isn't right. One thing you need to be particularly cautious of later on is down here where it says new body. My advice is make sure everything is a new body unless you're cutting away because that a body is just a 3D shape. Okay. Now, if you make this in a way that everything joins together and it all becomes one shape, when you want to go back and change things, it makes it really difficult. If they're all separate bodies or separate shapes combined together, um, then you can edit them a lot more uh, easily. But don't worry about that too much right now. Some of this will just come through practice. Again, I'm not worrying about the thickness of this. That looks roughly right to me. And there we go. So this is sort of like the bottom of my car. So now I'm going to make the cylinder that goes at the back of the car. So I've come around here to the back. Just making sure it is the back. I'm going to look at it straight on. So I just click the cube up here, looking at it straight on. And I'm going to make a new sketch. And I want to do it on the back here. So you can see this has popped up here. So I'm just click this back wall. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a rectangle over here. Now, what you might find is that it might not have gone exactly where you want it. So if you see here, it hasn't actually gone right on the edge like I wanted. So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to show you what you would do. So I was talking about bodies earlier. Every body you create will, will be here. So look, you can see that body there. The sketches will appear here. That one's actually turned off. And then we've got this one here that I've just created. I'm actually going to delete that sketch. And I'm going to start that over again, okay, because it might be better to draw this on the back here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I'm just going to move that because I don't want it to be as wide as here. I want it to be within that space. Um, and I'm just doing it by eye, but Later on, when you sort of become um, a bit more confident in this, you'll probably have um, a specific height in mind. So this is going to be where the gas cylinder is actually going to go into. I'm going to use fillet while I'm still in sketch mode to click, 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 click. Now, that might not be round enough for you and what you were doing. So what you can do is if you go back, you can do that again, but change this. So let's agree that both of these are going to be 20. And then I'm going to do the same again. Now, I can see a problem occurring. It's crossing over there. So there's issues there with my geometry. So I'm going to go back again. And so this time, let's make it, let's go for 15. There's no sort of set way of making an F1 in schools car. There's so many ways of approaching it. So this is just one way. Okay, I'm going to click uh, Finish Sketch, and I'm going to make that 3D by clicking on Extrude, and pushing that through like this. Now, the length of this needs to be at least 55, but I'm going to make it longer, so about there. 
And can you see what I was saying earlier about adding an extra body? So because this is 3D, this is a body. Down here it says join, change it to new body. Okay, because that will just make things easier later on. Click OK. OK, so my gas cylinder is going to go in there. So obviously I've got to place a hole for that to go in. So I'm going to go create sketch. I'm going to click on this black back plane and I'm going to use the circle tool. And at this point, obviously you want to be making sure it's in the perfect center. I'm just guesstimating at this point in time. And you also need to make sure this is the correct size. Again, I am just uh, guessing the diameter of the cylinder at this point. So now we're going to extrude again, but the difference this time is that when I push this in, you can see it cuts away. So if I push that out, okay, we can either join it, we can create a new body, or if we push it in, we can cut away. And that's really useful. So I think that needs to be around between 50 and 55. So I'm going to do it there, so make sure it's cut, and that will cut a hole in there. Okay, so the next step will make it look much more like an F1 in school's car. We're going to create a cone. So we're going to create a sketch. I'm going to create it on this front plane here, and I want it to be a tiny circle in the center. If you ever see that triangle pop up, if you see if I move along there, triangle pops up, that tells me that's the center point. So I'm going to make a tiny, tiny circle. Finish sketch. So you can see our tiny circle there. So what we're going to do now is create what we call a loft from here down to that circle to make like a cone shape. So we're going to create loft click first on this back plane and then click on this circle and there you go press ok now it's starting to look a bit more like an f1 in school's car but it's still a little bit blocky down here so a couple of great tools that you'll probably find you use a lot this fill it so I can fill it an edge like this to curve it off make note of the um, radius there because if you want to do the same on the other side you'll see need to do that or what you can do is actually click fill it hold down shift click that edge click that edge and you can fill it both of those at the same time so they're exactly the same um, you can also fill it a face. So a face is literally just like, that's a face, that's a face, that's a face. Okay, so you can see that interacts very differently compared to what we were doing on the edge. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to just press cancel because I don't actually want to do that, but I just wanted to demonstrate that. And then we've got chamfer as well. So again, we can do that on an edge. And that's an angle like that. Okay. So that's fillet and chamfer. Can really, really open up quite a lot of new possibilities for you. So just play around with those. Okay. So I'm not liking the front here. I think it's all a bit bulky. So let's cut away. So I'm going to create a sketch. And I'm going to, from this point here to there, I'm going to attempt to divide this up. So now it's divided. Now, that doesn't always work. Um, there are workarounds, though, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'm just going to chop that away there. So now I'm going to do the same over here. Hopefully this will work. It's 
seamlessly as the last one. If it doesn't, that might be a good opportunity for me to show you the workaround. It's divided it, so that's good. The workaround would be basically just create an extra body, like a whole shape. So draw a sketch that becomes a, a, a closed shape and then extrude that whole shape through the body. Um, that's how you would work around that. Okay, uh, it's starting to look good. Um, I am going to put a wing on it at this point. So I'm going to create a front wing and I'm going to use that same front wing for the back. So create a new sketch. I'm going to click on this back plane. It moves over, but we'll just move back. I'm going to create a rectangle. Zoom in. Again, this is just one way of doing it. There are so many different ways you could approach all of this. Okay, so. I think my fusion is becoming a bit laggy, so I'm just going to save this. Not actually using a computer that really should be used for fusion. It's not quite powerful enough. Okay, let's try and do it this way. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is create this arc. Okay, so I'm trying to create a point here. And then what I'm going to do here is fill it. Let's do that. 2.2 okay so you can see that was too much there what I might be able to do now is actually just you can see all my sketches appearing here I'm just going to right click on that and go to edit sketch and I can go back to this I'm going to see if I can just trim this weird bit off Okay, that looks like it's going to be fine. I'm also going to trim that, 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 that. So this is the profile of my wing here. So now let's make it 3D. Okay, new body, great. And then see, I've got a new body there. Okay, so moving things. So I want to move this now. Moving isn't as simple as you would think it would be. I think intuitively we just want to click and drag. You actually have to use the move tool, which is here. Um, and if it's not working properly, make sure the correct one of these is selected. So I'm moving a body, so that needs to be selected as a body. Now I click on here and then I can use these different controls. I would suggest the first time you use this, just play around with these controls. Here you can rotate things as well. Um, if you use these arrows, it will just move it in one direction. But just to have a little go, you can always press cancel, and you can always undo. And you can see everything I'm doing is actually appearing along this timeline at the bottom here. So I, I can actually watch back uh, how I've done stuff, and I can also go back and delete things that I've done before. I might show you that in a minute. So press OK. Um, I'm actually going to rotate that. I'm going to click on that surface to do it, though. Rotate. Uh, and then let's move it into there. Okay. Down a bit. Really simple. I'm not going to go any further with that because this is just a basics video. Okay. I'm going to, let's just quickly show you this. So if I move that timeline back there, press play, you can actually watch the whole car being built again. That means you can go back to different steps and alter things and delete things. It's, um, very useful and quite satisfying watching your little video. Okay, so I'm now I'm going to do something really lazy for the back wing. I'm going to make a copy of this front wing. So I've used the move tool. I'm going to select it. And before I move it, I'm going to click this box, create copy. Now when I move it, it creates a copy for me. I'm just going to place that 
in there. And I'm going to move it up and I press OK. And there you go. I've got a back wing all of a sudden. And there we go. So that is the real basics of how to make the F1 in schools car. Uh, there's obviously still quite a bit to do. Um, I could probably do this quite quickly if I make a... Again, I'm not going to worry about the size here. But this is the hole for the tether line. Okay, and we want to cut that through. All the way through. Now the problem is that's also going to cut through my wing, but actually that looks okay. And there we go. If I wanted to create holes for the axles, again, new sketch. Click on here. And let's go. Yeah, that'll do. Sketch, extrude, carway. Okay, it's that simple. Um, so just a few things to remember. Remember, every time you create a new body, new the bodies will show up here. Um, you might want to like make some shapes to begin with, some guidelines. So what I tend to do is make. A virtual cargo so you'll need to look that up in the um, regulations I actually make the virtual cargo because that has to fit inside of here um, and so I make it but I don't always want it switched on so although it will show up here I have it switched off most of the time that particular thing but just remember every shape you create is actually called a body and it's all there and you can do things to them like delete them turn them off and then same with sketches. Every sketch you do okay, is down here. Um, and you can go back and edit to edit them. You can delete them, turn them on and off. Sketches turn off automatically once you go into 3D mode, by the way. Um, and that's that. Um, okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.